Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we are going to be talking about the hard hitting topic. Is it worth buying used PC parts? Buying PC parts used is a, well, touchy subject for some people because it can be risky, but we're here to tell you what you should buy used and how you can save a lot of money by doing so, but also be safe while doing so. Before we dive into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Lexar, your one-stop shop for all your storage needs. Today we are looking at the Hades RGB RAM kit featuring absolutely beautiful RGB, capacities up to 32 gigabytes, and super fast 3600 megahertz speed that is rock solid stable, making it perfect for your next Intel or AMD gaming rig. But don't forget that Lexar has SSDs as well, like the NM620, with read speeds up to 3300 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 3000 megabytes per second, and capacities of 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes, and one terabyte. If you're looking to build a new PC or just upgrade your rig, then definitely consider the Hades memory and NM620 SSD by checking the link down below. And special thanks again to Lexar for sponsoring today's video. So before we actually talk about what things you should and shouldn't buy used and what are the pros and cons, we'll just talk about the main places that we can really think of. So we have Facebook Marketplace, we have eBay, we have Craigslist, we have things like OfferUp, and then we have a bunch of third-party apps that are kind of on the, the run and go. And then obviously we have like Newegg and Amazon, people can do like refurb, you can actually have custom sales and stuff like that on those websites. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just talk about that. First up with CPU, I do recommend you buy it used because CPUs, for the most part, there are some exceptions, are one of the most durable parts in a PC. They rarely go bad. If you buy an older Ryzen CPU, there is a really high probability of maybe bent pins on the CPU or something like that. But Intel is a pretty safe bet, especially some of the older Intel processors. The reason they work perfectly fine from 10 plus years ago. So CPU is a pretty safe bet. Now next up is one of the most important parts, the graphics card or GPU, if you're not going with something like an APU. So the GPU, I would say yes, we do recommend buying used, but it's a lot different market than it was back when you know it made sense. So nowadays, you can buy a lot of new graphics cards, like all the new RTX cards and all the new RX cards, people often scalp them, they're usually new sealed in the box. The main disadvantage though is you're paying more than MSRP, and on top of that, you're also not getting a receipt or anything like that. And a lot of these eBay sellers, you gotta remember, these are just normal people. If you have a problem with the card, they do not wanna deal with it, and they're just gonna say most of the time, hey, go through the RMA process and hopefully you get your money back. Now obviously with used cards, if you can find them at the right deal, it's often a really good buy. Make sure the sellers have good feedback. You know, make sure you can even honestly test the card if you're doing like a local Craigslist or Facebook sale. And the other most important thing is make sure it's not a mining card. If you don't anticipate using it for mining, if it has a mining BIOS on it, you better know how to flash or else that card is basically a brick when it comes to gaming. And with the motherboard, this is kind of a mixed bag here because motherboards are really high failure because there's a lot of stuff happening on this board that runs the CPU, RAM, and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. So with the motherboard, your mileage may vary. I would lean much more towards not buying used if you have the new option. But sometimes if you have an older CPU, buying used is literally the only way you can get a board. And in that case, you're probably just gonna have to take the gamble and hope you buy on a place like eBay that has buyer protection. And that goes for pretty much all the parts we're mentioning here. eBay with buyer Buyer protection, it sucks for sellers. We've sold before and gotten screwed before, but as a buyer, you will get coverage from eBay if you're, even if you look at it and it smells funny. Like you take it out of the package, it smells funny. I have a feeling eBay will probably be like, all right, you know what? We'll give the money back to the buyer. Um, kind of a messed up way there. But regardless, motherboards are a little bit hairy. And if you are looking at a newer board, I would just buy it new instead of used on eBay. Now, next up is RAM, another important component. This is one where I'm gonna say about 80% of the time, it is not worth it. Just due to the fact that RAM is typically really cheap. Like right now, it is at an all-time low. If it ever has a thing where, you know, RAM just gets really expensive again, then of course, maybe we'll recommend it. But as of right now, you can get like DDR4, 16 gigs, dual channel for around 50 to like 60 bucks. And at that point, if you go on like eBay and Facebook and stuff, most people are trying to sell their used RAM with no box, no warranty, anything for like the same price as new. That of course is absolutely insane. I don't even know how people make those sales, but they do somehow. And then it's kind of the same thing with storage. Storage is so cheap right now, especially SSDs. The only real benefit you might save money on is getting like bulk discounts on like older hard drives, but that is still a little bit of a gamble in itself because you don't know if it's using like a data center and has really high writes and reads on it to where it's not gonna last as long. But yeah, storage, I would definitely lean more towards new unless you just find a crazy deal that is way below the new asking price. Always check new prices, especially if you're buying a newer product before looking at the used market. Next 
up is power supply. This is one that I'm just going to say is pretty much always a no because you can buy like let's say an EVGA 500 watt for $30, typically $25. You can buy really nice like 800 and or 50 watt like gold rated power supplies that are modular and semi-modular for sometimes $70 to $80 and on up depending on what type of certifications you want. And at that point, buying a used power supply just makes almost no sense unless someone's selling you like a Corsair RM850X that they can show you runs and everything and you're getting it for like 20 bucks, it's just not worth buying used. And cases are in the same route as well. It's the whole thing of new cases are not much more expensive than used cases. And there are exceptions to these rules. If you're buying locally, there's a chance you might buy, let's say someone's bill that has a case, a power supply, and some other stuff in it. And that whole bundle together makes a lot of sense. And in that option, yeah, definitely go for it. We pick up stuff locally all the time with a couple of components here and there that we wouldn't necessarily recommend buying on their own, but together it's a good deal. But with cases, again, there's so many new cases, so many budget cases that are really Really good that it's just better off buying new and not worrying about any sort of issues you may have with an older case. And so now that we've talked about the main websites and then obviously all the main parts that you should and shouldn't buy, just to kind of touch real quick on where is actually like safe to buy because we get that question a lot. So like Matt was saying, eBay has the buyer back money guarantee that's almost bulletproof. So it, it usually works like 90% of the time. So if you have anything go wrong, you just don't like the part or obviously if it shows up defective, you can pretty much always get your money back. Even if the seller doesn't want to give it to you, eBay will actually step in and basically find the money some other way. Now, obviously things like OfferUp, Facebook, Marketplace, Craigslist, these are typically cash only deals. They don't even really have a way to pay through them. Facebook kind of does, but Craigslist and OfferUp, they're very iffy. So with those guys, keep in mind, once you buy it, you're probably never gonna hear from that seller again. So either test it on site or just have a lot of faith in that you're getting a really good deal and even if it doesn't work, you're not losing a lot of money. So those are our main tips when buying used PC parts. In general, we do recommend buying used in certain areas. I would say the main part is graphics cards right now because unless you're finding the lucky gym buying new, you're gonna have to go scalper used or just used in general older cards. So that is our best recommendation for that. If you guys have any suggestions for people buying used, comment down below. I'd love to hear and let me know which website you buy used from the most when building gaming PCs. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let us know in the comment section down below if you want us to talk on any other subjects. You know, if you're having trouble, you know, needing some dating advice, you need some advice on building your next PC. We can do it all, honestly. I mean, let's just let's just let's just be real here. But yeah, check out our other two YouTube channels. Check out our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Peace out. Now, if y'all are scared of all these used places, you know, you don't like not having a year long warranty or even extended warranty, Matt will tell you what to do there. PCBros.tech, we will hold your hand through the wildness that is PC buying. I don't know why I said wildness, it's not really a great thing, but you know what? We sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, laptops, and much other stuff. Store in person, check out our website, PCBros.tech. See you guys later. Goodbye. Yeehaw. Me, howdy.